Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. We're glad you've joined us today as we bring you some of the most important developments in the global automotive industry. The Fiat Group reported its earnings from last year, which now officially include all the Chrysler numbers. The group sold 4.4 million vehicles, up 3%, and that boosted revenue by a little over 3% to $114 billion. Net profits came to nearly $2.6 billion, up a whopping 118% as Fiat can now officially claim Chrysler's profits as part of its own. And yet, earnings before income taxes took a hit, dropping nearly 13%. Overall, Fiat benefited greatly from absorbing Chrysler, but the group's numbers are not that impressive, with a return on sales of less than 4%. You have to be in the 6 to 8% range to be considered first rate, and if we were handing out report cards, we'd give the Fiat group a C. Now let's break out the Chrysler numbers to get a more complete picture of what's going on within the group. Chrysler sold 2.4 million vehicles worldwide, up a strong 9%. That boosted revenue by more than 9% to just over $72 billion. Net profits shot up a staggering 65% to $2.7 billion. But wait, there's an asterisk with this number. It jumped by nearly a billion dollars thanks to a one-time tax credit. Even so, if you take that out, Chrysler's net profits were up more than 7%, while its operating profit was up 9%. And yet, Chrysler's net profit margin is also less than 4%, which is not very competitive. And that makes me wonder, are some of Fiat's development or administrative costs being charged to Chrysler? In a move that no one on the outside at least saw coming, Andreas Rentschler, Mercedes-Benz's operations chief, and a strong candidate to succeed Dieter Zetsche as CEO, suddenly quit the company. Rentschler reportedly felt he was not given enough authority in his current position. You may remember that Rentschler ran the Mercedes assembly plant in Alabama in the U.S. when it first opened, and now it looks like Wolfgang Bernhard is a shoe-in to take over as CEO when Zetsche retires. Those two have been a team ever since they ran Chrysler during the Daimler Chrysler days. And Zetsche has clearly helped Bernhard further his career. You know, I think Rentschler finally read the writing on the wall. Lincoln has been struggling to regain a foothold in the U.S., and now it looks like it's facing headwinds in China. Ford has decided to delay the return of the brand to China until the end of this year. The issue? It's struggling to get dealers to sign up to sell Lincolns. If you combine Beijing, Shanghai, and Hangzhou, only five distributors have signed up so far. GMC is giving reporters their first seat time in the 2015 Denali HD this week. And what we're learning about this refreshed truck is the powertrains are still the same, but the towing capability has been upgraded. But the biggest changes are in the styling. Once you get past the whole new exterior look, I mean, you still got the Denali cues up front. It's still got that signature Denali grille, slightly different shape to it, which people have reacted very well to. It's on the inside. It's a totally different cabin on the inside, even for a Denali. It's all those premium materials we talked about with standard nav, standard assist steps now to get you in. There's a whole new level of features available on Denali. Uh, Heated and cooled seats in the front. Front and rear park assist are new on this truck for a Denali. Uh, Standard nav now is new for a Denali. It's just a whole nother level up for a Denali with this truck versus the previous generation Denali. Oh yeah, big difference. One thing that GMC does not expect to change is its most popular seller, which is the Denali HD crew cab with the Duramax diesel. The Fort Wayne and Flint plants just started shipping the trucks this week and they should be showing up in dealerships anytime. Toyota plans to make a big splash introducing the redesign of the Highlander featuring the Muppets in its Super Bowl ad. And just so you know ahead of time what they've done with the Highlander, we'll give you a sneak preview right after this. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Since it first appeared on the scene in 2001, the Toyota Highlander has been a top seller in the segment. Last year, for instance, it sold almost 128,000 units in the U.S., but still only finished fourth behind Ford and Jeep. So clearly there's room to grow sales, and what better way to do it than with a retooled third-generation Highlander? Toyota redesigned the 2014 on the outside with a bold, more chiseled look than ever before. Meanwhile, under the hood of this unibody SUV are two engine options, a 2.7-liter four-cylinder or a 3.5-liter V6. There's also a hybrid version of the 3.5, but it's only available in the most expensive trim level. Moving to the inside of the vehicle, engineers carved out more cargo space in the back and increased seating up to eight. The interior now has softer materials throughout the cabin, as well as what Toyota calls its smart storage solutions, including a built-in shelf for your phone or other items, as well as a larger center console area for purses, bags, and even small briefcases. And even though this 2014 comes equipped with the usual and expected these days, list of technological goodies, including Toyota's latest Entune system, what's even newer is a unique way for the driver to talk to the passengers in the third row without yelling. We also have a new feature called Driver Easy Speak, which is actually a microphone in the overhead console. And that allows you to speak to the passengers in the third row. It actually projects your voice through a microphone. To the, through the third row speakers so that you can still be facing forward and talk to the people in the third row. So that's a new feature and that's standard on our XLE and our Limited. And speaking of trim levels, the Highlander has four that its target consumer, baby boomers and young families, can choose from. LE, LE Plus, XLE, and the top of the line, Limited. And though we'll see the usual selection of print broadcasting and social media marketing for the vehicle, Toyota shows how serious this segment is to the company by spending big bucks to sell Highlander during the Super Bowl with none other than the Muppets. And that keeps a consistent marketing theme for Highlander, teaming up with popular cartoon characters like one aquatic invertebrate who lives beneath the sea. Well, you might know that we started uh, marketing the new Highlander back in the summer uh, with our partnership with SpongeBob. And that was a really wonderful opportunity for folks to get in the vehicle. So we took a special SpongeBob Highlander on a cross-country tour to places like the Mall of America and Nickelodeon Hotel and Suites in uh, Florida. And at events like that, where our family customer is already there enjoying uh, the environment and enjoying themselves, they got a chance to see the fun Highlander. They got in, they looked around, and we're gonna continue to have things like that. So Toyota sponsors ride and drive events at auto shows and at other um, different events throughout you know, the country. And Highlander will be featured at those. Almost all versions of the Highlander are in dealerships right now, with the hybrid expected to be available next month. And wow, that microphone to talk to backseat passengers? That's pretty cool. And that's got to be a first in the industry, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, make sure to mark your calendars for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night when our guest is going to be none other than Bob Lutz. We'll be talking about what he sees going on in the automotive industry right now, as well as his involvement in all these electric car ventures. So start getting your questions ready as we host one of the most interesting personalities this industry has ever seen. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.